All right, everybody, don't be alarmed by what you're going, what you're seeing on the screen here. For this week's dissecting design, we are going to take apart the idle slash clicker genre and explain why this thing is so damn addictive. Now, because I know these games aren't exactly the most exciting to watch, I've got not one, not two, but four different games we're going to be taking a look at at various stages to talk about how the design hooks people from beginning to middle to some magical end point way into the future. And what's the perfect game to start out with? But the game that really kind of led to the growth of the genre, and that is Cookie Clicker. Now we play this on the Game Wisdom stream, I think that was for our April Fool's Day a long time ago. But I want to talk more about the design of the game, or talk more about the design of idle cl clicker games here. Every idle game, or most of them, will start off with nothing. The idea is, you have to be engaged to get going. And as we play, things are going to start unlocking. In my recent critical thought on progression models, I talked about this. You're always given where you're at, what you're aiming for, and what you will get from it. Now, what's very interesting about the idle genre is that, technically, even though you start out by clicking, as you can obviously hear, that's the last thing you want to be doing in a game like this. You want to start getting things that will work for you. And many of these games are not designed around you having constant focus. Once you get going, you're pretty much going to let things go on their own. Now, as we play... Again, we're given things to go for. There's always a ton of achievements in idle games. If we come over here, you can see quite a big list. And again, this is all about giving the player things to shoot for. Now, as we keep going, we'll be unlocking more things over here. Unlock that. And things are just going to keep going onward and onward. Now you can't see it all the way over here, but this will fill up with various buildings to go for. Now in most idle games, as we get further in, it's not about so much the challenge, but it's always about the scale. My What I'm doing here is obviously not going to be changing anytime soon, but our cookies per second or our resources per second will go up and up and up. And this is again about giving the player something that's easily uh, represented or quantified to them to let them know that progress is happening. In a lot of games that have poor progression models, you're doing things and it's only working for the long term. As in, what am I going to get after 5 quests? Or 10 levels in? But the idle genre and games of this kind are built around as immediate uh, graphication or progress as you can reasonably get. Now, of course, things will tend to dry out as you get later in. Now, keep your uh, keep notice of this, the legacy, because another major part of the idle genre, and especially getting you hooked, is the long-term progression of persistent elements. But I have a second game to look at for that in the coming minutes. Like I said, this is going to probably be a quicker dissecting design this week because the idle genre itself is very fascinating, but it's also very limited in what we can talk about. That's why I have multiple games planned to help ease the eye strain and keep all of us from falling asleep on our respective keyboards. Now, I won't play this up until we get the third item or the third building here because I want to talk a little bit more about scale before we move on to the next game in our list. And again, we have some long-term rewards, and those that upgrade list will grow exponentially over a course of a play. But we're almost there. Can we make it to 1100 before we all fall asleep? And again, this is where things start out. But once we start getting more of these structures, it's going to change or it's going to speed up dramatically. And you'll see why the second I build the farm. 
as you can see we've just about almost quadrupled our speed here and the scale is now a lot faster and that's how things work each thing that you buy here is a massive improvement over the previous this is how they get you to keep playing because now you're going to go okay this farm did all of this what can this do and then of course once we get that we go from here and one of the things a lot of people like about the idle and clicker genre is kind of the numbers game that goes into it because it's all about you optimizing how do I make some numbers go up to make other numbers go down for some of the more combat oriented games but with that said I know you guys must be getting really tired staring at this big old cookie here so I'm going to switch to another game and we're going to talk more about the I guess the long-term growth of it, but I will see you all in a minute. All right, everybody, we've gone from cookies to cash. This is Adventure Capitalist, yet another one of the clicker games available, this one on Steam, I think on various platforms. And the reason why I want to move to this one is that this is the, what we like to call the tail end of the clicker experience. Look at all these crazy numbers. And at this point, you can see just how far you can really go. And the beauty is that you can get, spend real money to get permanent upgrades, which I'll talk more about in the next game. But at the basic level, persistent in idle games is always going to be about getting some kind of secondary resource. In this game, it's about angels. As you play through, you'll gain more and more angels based on how much money you earn in a single play. When you take that, it gives you a bonus. So the idea is you always want to go above what you currently have so that the next play is quicker, and then quicker, and so on. So right now, if I do this, let's see what happens. I'm back at the start again, but... As you can see, we are earning a lot of money very, very quickly. And the best part is we're earning it on the most expensive items immediately. And this is how these games start to work out over time. When you first start playing, it's going to take you probably a day or two of constant play to be able to unlock this. But because we've gone through this, or I've gone through this so many times, it's not a problem. All these items that would have taken time to go, we can just do it immediately. In fact, we're overloading the game by how much I can speed through this. And again, it's all about the scale. goodness I've gotten so much money in this that it's just the game can't keep up and of course just like in our last thing there are achievements lots and lots and lots of achievements look at all this can't stop doing it folks it just keeps going on and on and on and what they do as part of the optimization is that at certain uh, buying tiers, you unlock special researches. Oh, sorry. Special researches that will enhance everything else or enhance a certain one of these items for a greater amount. So what essentially happens is that it becomes a strategy of knowing how far to push certain items before you focus on something else. It's usually like every thousand for everything will get you an upgrade but again look at those numbers look how fancy I look now if you come over here you can see right now we have not claimed any angel investors now the rate that you do gain them is consistent across every play but the idea is as we speed things up we'll be gaining them a lot quicker
And again, it seems like I'm losing my angels, but remember, we are way beyond these numbers at this point. Thank you, game. And of course, we can just quick buy all of them. Without the game hopefully not blowing up on me. <laughs> the game can't handle... Oh my goodness, I think I just crashed the game with my spending. That's not good, folks. But, there we go. So now, we should be gaining Angel Investors pretty quickly, I hope. Right, everything is just working automatically. And because I got the upgrade, we can just hit Quick Buy and everything gets unlocked. Despite me trying to blow this game up. <laughs> My goodness. This is a great example, by the way, of, again, the late elements of these clicker games. You're so freaking wealthy that everything just speeds through. Come on, game. Buy it all. And you have to do this each time you play, just so we can get all that lovely gold and such. And these golden tickets, which you can either buy with real money, or get, hopefully, luckily through events, basically permanently upgrades an item here. So, watch this. So, we go here, and I will spend it on this. It is now permanently boosted. And like I said, we'll talk more about persistent elements in our third game. But again, you can see just how crazy things are going to get. And of course, we can spend gold, which is the game's premium currency, for all manner of crazy rewards. Look at this, wear it on any planet. Oh, and that's the other thing that Adventure Capitalist does. To increase the end game, once you complete everything on one planet, you can then go to another planet, and the process repeats, well, once again. Of course, with a different group of angels. But wait, there's more. You can go to a third planet now that they keep adding in, and repeat it again. And again, and again. I'm not sure what that just did, but I guess it will cool. We're earning Martian money now. But notice, it's the same group of ten for each planet. But, with that said, Oop, I just exiled the game completely, but that's a good time because we're going to move on to our third game and we're going to talk about the persistent elements and how things hook the player for hours and sometimes days at a time. Alright, welcome back, folks. This time we are playing... I'm going to turn the music off here. <laughs> and that. We are playing Clicker Heroes. This is another popular game, and it's a really good example of the persistent side of the clicker genre. Because that is a major element of what keeps these games going. Now over here we have our, I guess our heroes, which again, each idle clicker game uses its own unique thing. And of course, go up in price, increases the scale of our damage exponentially. Now, if you look right here, you have Hero Souls. And these are special things, as you can see, that unlock through a World Ascension, aka a Reset. One of the major things that goes on with the Idle Genre, as we saw with Adventure Capitalist, is resetting, but with additional resources. And the idea, of course, is again that persistent element. That you're not just restarting at zero. You have additional things. 
It's not just you repeating the same things over and over and over again. So we can, I'm going to try and speed things up as best we can. And you'll see these guys start to fall fairly quickly. Again, we have researches that unlock. And apparently this is a new thing now of a quest. And again, based on time, we get new rewards. And it's just another way of getting persistent elements. The rubies that they just mentioned are the game's premium currency. Now we have ch uh, clans or guilds. Now here's another element. You have these relics that add permanent upgrades to your agents. <laughs> I know, it, it get the rabbit hole gets pretty intense in these games. But these elements, again, always carry over through play. And also adds to some of the persistent strategy of trying to figure out the best ways of gaming the system. Because no one wants to sit here and play this game, you know, day in and day out. Here's our ascension, or the number of times I've done it. And in Clicker Heroes, you can only ascend once you hit level 100. And then once you do that, however well you did, you'll get hero souls, which will then boost things as well. And there's a chance you unlock them along the way. Now, of course, we have special items. And, oh, good, now there's skins you can buy. <laughs> it is crazy, isn't it? Now, I'm trying to remember, where is it? It's been a while since I've played this, which is good, I guess, for my health, right? But another aspect of the game is you can get special gilded versions of your heroes. These unlock, again, permanent bonuses. And that's a major part. Actually, I think it's down... Where is it? There we go. So gilded heroes get a fancier new look, and they add more damage. And of course, it stays persistent. Because the idea is, if you're going to spend real money or premium currency on a clicker game, you have to have those persistent elements. There has to be something that you are keeping over each ascension. Because if you are just purely starting back at zero, no one in their right mind would want to play this game where I get to the end, I have to repeat it exactly the same way again and again and again. So we have these special powers, which are supposed to add more elements of you controlling things. And typically, the better idle games give the player control. It's not just like Cookie Clicker, where I'm just sitting there watching numbers go up. They want me to interact. Which, in this case, it's using special powers. It's thinking about what relics I want to equip. What mercenaries I want. What agents we want to spend. And the agents cost your hero soul. So you have to make sure you're getting something you really like for it. And then there's yet another resource that's used if you want to upgrade <laughs> your, your uh, relics or your agents, again, to go even further. And of course, if we want to do it easier, we can just spend rubies. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, look at this. Get to 50 rubies, and we can buy double damage forever. Now that's pretty nice, and rubies will sometimes drop if you get really, really lucky as you play. So that's kind of the way of, it's kind of like the uh, gambling or the casino culture in Las Vegas or a major place like that. That you can earn, you know, millions and millions of dollars, but you have to be stupidly lucky for that. And that's the same case here. I could get all those rubies that I need to get that very powerful upgrade, or we can spend money. And look, there's a sale going on right now, or it gives you a discount. Look at that, folks. Don't we all want to spend money? But as, again, we keep going up and up and up, eventually you have to decide when to ascend in order to collect those bonuses. 
And don't try friending me on here, folks, because I don't think I'm going to be <laughs> playing this after we're done with this video. Of course, I can click, click like the wind. Increase our DPS. We just keep raising up. And again, you can see things improving over there. Raise our gold level. Oh, can we do it? I don't know. I don't think we're going to be able to do it. Oh, wait, maybe with the power clicking. Yay, we did it. But I won't be, we won't be sitting here watching me get to level 100. With that said, let's move on to the fourth game. And then we'll go back to Cookie Clicker to talk about the downsides or the problems with the idle slash clicker slash free to play kind of market this is. But I'll see you all in a second. Welcome back, everyone. So this is the fourth game I have. This is, I want to make sure I get the name right, Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. This one's actually on Early Access right now, which I know sounds weird for a clicker game. Now, one of the things I wanted to save this game for last is, is another element of these games, again, is the idle. So what they will do in order to keep you coming back is, as long as you have the game installed or you have cookies stored, things will be running while you're offline. So the idea is, I can go offline, get what I need to make massive progress, which in this case is unlocking more of these heroes, and going from there. Now as time goes on, you can also see gear down here, which again is another element of the persistent factor of these games. But to mix things up, I want to also talk a little bit more about the store. So again, we have the store side. You have super rare chests, which cost a lot more of the game's premium currency. You have the generic ones. And the game, of course, is always about getting some kind of reason to get you to spend money. And usually your first major purchase will come with a unique or one of the, ooh, excuse me, one of a kind rewards. In the game uh, Shop Heroes, for instance, the second you spent money, it unlocked a permanent enhancement to your shop, which we won't be going to that one here, uh, thankfully. Now in this one, the big twist is that you upgrade your heroes and it's about the positioning of where they're at, which will gain you more bonuses. And if we come over here to the world map, you can see the game's persistent element in these favors, which unlock additional gold fine. And if we go to the, this is where I completed it before, you get additional rewards. And again, the idea is that you're starting at zero, but you're not really starting at zero. You're always trying to move forward in some aspect so that the player feels like they are making meaningful progress. And in this game, it's not only getting the gold fine, but getting lucky with drops to unlock this kind of gear, which of course, the gear comes in various tiers in order to incentivize you to keep playing and growing. So for the heck of it, I'm going to buy this chest and see if we get anything fancy. Yes, no. Da, da, da. Oh, we got something there. So that is a permanent piece of loot that will stay with us going forward. Also notice how there are the different monetary tiers. And here's one thing that I like that's, again, very sneaky of this idol and the monetization. If you notice, it costs 50 gems per chest. So they're not really saving you money on this front. However, if you spend real money, there is a discount. $5 gets you three, but $10 will get you seven. So you're getting one extra chess. This is again the way of trying to convince you that, hey, you spend more money, you're gonna get more rewards in the process. Now if we come over here. Again, we just keep unlocking rewards. Just trying to get them better and better and better. 
Now, like I said, the better examples of the clicker genre give some kind of impact on the player's side. For this one, it is about trying to maximize how things go here. So there is some nature of strategy. However, again, it's still a idle game. There is one game that I came really close to spending real money on. I think it was Idle Civilization or something along those lines, which is probably one of the most involved in terms of min-maxing and optimization, but it's still a clicker game no matter how you slice it. And again, our challenge is we need to complete Area 50, and right now I am only on Area 10, so this is not going to be happening in this video. Of course, they're talking. You get special powers that can be activated after a number of time. And of course, if you fail, then you have to go back and get more gold to hopefully level up your heroes and be able to break through. Because again, it's always about the numbers. Get those permanent gems. Which, do I even have enough for another treasure chest? Oh, we don't. How sad. And we repeat it again. And again, and again, and again. But each time we do it, we'll get more rewards and more loot that will stay with us. And look at all those lovely spots that we can have quests to play with. And we can spend money if we wanted to. And it repeats. And like I said, what makes the idol genre so popular is how the progression works. You're always being given some carrot on the stick to go for. Like right now, we can either upgrade this guy again when we hit 54,000 gold, or we hold our money till we get to 1 million and we unlock her. And then that will speed things up further, but then there'll be another character to unlock, and another, and another. And all the while, we're just sitting here letting the game play. And... Well, again, for those of you who don't get hooked on the Isle genre, I know you're thinking, how does it do it? How do people get hooked on this? But again, because the progression model is so immediate, and you're always given something new to go for, it just helps to keep you hooked. But, with that said though, there are some obvious major limitations to this genre, no matter how many progression elements you add, no matter how many currencies you can afford. And we'll go back to Cookie Clicker to wrap up this week's dissecting design. So I'll see you all in a second. All right, we are back to our favorite game, I guess, here to wrap up and kind of get my final thoughts on where the limitations of the clicker genre lie. So as we have seen over this, I'm sure, very exciting dissecting design, these games are built purely on progression. Even the most gameplay involved one, which was the uh, Dungeons and Dragons one that we just looked at, it's still nowhere near in terms of complexity or player action compared to even the most basic video games. I'm talking, you know, Atari and NES era. And that is kind of the main limitation of the clicker genre, is that no matter how involved it is, no matter how complicated you make it and add progression models to it, it's still going to be on the low end in terms of player interaction. And there is just that point that a lot of people reach where they just stop playing. And once you stop playing an idle genre kind of game, it's not something you're going to come back to because there's no gameplay growth to it. So once you stop playing it, why... <laughs> For, like, myself, I just quit cold turkey. Like, with Cookie Clicker, there was a time that I was hooked on this one, and the second I started to feel bored, it was wiped never to be seen again. And the problem comes with how there just doesn't seem to be enough here to keep your interest. And what's very interesting is that we've seen on the mobile and free-to-play side, designers trying to fight that either by implementing gotcha design, uh, having resources and bonuses you can do, basically ways of obscuring the raw numbers of the clicker. 
There was a game I played in was Soda Pop Dungeon or Soda Dungeon that again add in the idea of persistent elements with permanent upgrades and rare loot you can keep and attach to your characters. And it's all there to distract you from the fact that really you're just watching some numbers go up and in some cases to make other numbers go down. I mean, watch this, folks. Get ready for the excitement. Look at that. It's going even faster now. I know this is completely riveting to everyone who's enjoying this or has stuck with it to this point. Maybe you guys deserve some kind of achievement for that. But, whatever the case may be, the clicker genre still is worthy of being studied. Again, the focus on progression models and keeping the player invested in the game are important lessons for any game developer, be it indie, AAA, or somewhere in between. And the fact that they do manage to hook players is a great way to see just, I guess, the dangers of this kind of design. Why a lot of people have talked and gone out against stuff like the mobile monetization, the idea of whales and microtransactions. Because all of this is, again, designed to get you to either sit and watch or, of course, spend your hard-earned money. Now, with Cookie Clicker, there doesn't seem to be any way to spend money, thankfully. But, with the other ones we looked at today, they most certainly offer shops, premium currency, and special stuff along those lines. And, it works because of one simple fact, and this is what we'll end today's dicing design on. Whenever it comes to any video game built on unlocking, and again with good progression models, there are two key factors, time and money. And a good game designer, or those that are trying to make money, will learn to balance and design the game around both. Someone who has tons of time but doesn't want to spend money can earn premium upgrades maybe by getting lucky with getting those resources, completing daily quests, and so on. But if someone has a lot of money but doesn't want to spend time wasting, then they can spend on premium currency and permanent unlocks and so on and so forth. And we saw that very same nature in Team Fortress 2 when it went free to play and integrated the Manco store. The point is, if you want this to work, both groups must be catered to. In the Dungeons & Dragons game, if I wanted to, I could just keep getting gems and eventually I can get access to those rewards. Or, if I didn't have that time, I can uh, you know, drop $10, $15, get those special chests, get my super rare loot, and speed through things that way. It's almost akin to like when like EA tried to have those cheats or when you could buy cheat codes. Like, spend $2, beat the entire game immediately. And I know with that, it just is very annoying to see in these kinds of games. And the sad part is that it works. Again, the free-to-play, mobile, and idle genres have made extensive use of this kind of monetization and these very effective progression models that keep people playing. And as long as there is some carrot on the stick in front of them, it will keep you invested. Until, of course, that magical point when the game loses you for even just one second, and then you will, it will probably break the spell, I suppose. But, as we are nearing 5,000 cookies, which I know is so amazing for you guys watching, let's wrap this week's dissecting design up here. This was kind of a grab bag between the idle clicker genre, but don't worry, next week we will get back to some good old faction, or good old fashioned complicated gameplay. But thank you so much for watching. Again, for those of you who have managed to stick with it until the very end, congratulations, you've earned a game wisdom achievement which unfortunately isn't worth anything. If you'd like to suggest a game for me to look at for a future dissecting design, please let me know. If you're new, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check out patreon.com slash gwbaster for ways to support and get some nifty rewards. And check back for daily discussions on game design here and on gamewisdom.com where we examine the art and science of games. Look at that, we just got a golden cookie just as we were ending. Isn't that lucky, folks? <laughs> but. Dissecting Design pieces will go up every Monday, 
But until next time, have a great night, eat some cookies, fight some orcs, and I guess earn some money. But until next time, take care. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and come back nightly around 10 Eastern for regular game streams. For a collection of my writings as well as weekly podcasts on game design topics, be sure to check out game-wisdom.com. You can follow me on Twitter at GWBicer for updates from me throughout the day. And be sure to check out our Patreon campaign and find us on Patreon under GW Bicer for ways to not only support Game Wisdom, but you can get access to our Discord channel where we'll talk game design topics as well as allow you to vote for our Saturday Night Grab Bag stream. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the next video here on the Game Wisdom YouTube channel.